Very simple superheterodyne radio for shortwave part 2. There are an, another, a few other general questions. You can ask for instance why the whole radio was made so big on this big wooden plate. Well, when you want to make a radio small, there are problems and especially when coils start to couple. And that's also the reason that the VFO coil, now in the middle of the screen, and the antenna coil are positioned in different directions. One is horizontal and the other coil is vertical mounted. And they have a certain distance from each other. And um, that's done by purpose because when they couple the radio will start to cry or to weep when you tune in to a radio station. The whole circuit can start to oscillate on a high frequency, say 6000 Hz or so. And that's not uh, the meaning from this radio. We must have a good quiet reception. When you want to make such a radio uh, small, you have to shield uh, the different parts from the radio. So the VFO and the antenna circuit. Here you see another radio that I made. And this radio was made small. It's a shortwave receiver for the 80 meter band, radio amateurs band, 3.5 megahertz. This radio is small and here you can see clearly that I have used shielding. Now in the middle of the screen of that radio is the VFO and I have mounted tin plate around it to prevent that the VFO couples with the antenna coil that's here. They are both now in a horizontal position, but because of the metal shielding they cannot couple. So that's the problem when you want to make the radio small. Uh, you need shielding. And for the IF transformers that's not a problem, because they are shielded in a metal can. That's here. No problem. Um, and here you can also see the transformer. It also has a kind of shielding on its top. Um, so that's the reason why I make this, these radios in this way. You can also see, uh, and that has also to do with the question why do you make it so big, why do you use wood? Wood has no effect on the uh, Q, the quality factor, from the coils. Here in this radio we have the antenna coil, the green one in the middle of the screen, and here okay, again the antenna coil. There's wood around it, and when you, um, for instance, place such a coil next to a metal screen from iron, from tin plate, the peak from the coil, the quality factor from the coil, will go down. So you don't have a sharp peak in that case. And that's the reason why all these coils stand freely on the wooden plate. Well, now we're going to the power supply. I have already talked about the power supply yesterday. I had a comment. Uh, um, that I did well to use a safeguarding diodes here in this circuit. Thanks for that comment. It's also a good uh, way to prevent um, <coughs> an important uh, effect with the 7812 uh, power uh, supply stabilizer. stabilizer. You see that uh, 7812 and the way that I use uh, these uh, stabilizers is this. The input there is a big capacitor. At the output the capacitor must be smaller. And the reason is that when you switch off the radio there must not be uh, a back, the current must not fly back into the 7812. 
and when the, the capacitor with the highest charge uh, is decisive for that effect. And to prevent uh, a situation that the uh, decoupling unit from the radio, that's here, <coughs> this is my decoupling unit, that is this capacitor, and that, uh, hun uh, that green resistor from 100 ohms, it's the decoupling unit, keeps the radio stable. You can see it here, 100 microfarad and 100 nanofarad and uh, also not uh, drawn here that 100 ohms resistor. This decoupling unit is connected via a diode, a silicon diode that can handle say a 3 ampere or so. And you find that diode here. This is that diode here. And that diode also prevents that uh, the cap that is charged high, the 1000 microfarad cap from the decoupling unit, can send in a reverse current to the 7812. Uh, but you can also use uh, um, safeguarding diodes. I'd never use them, but perhaps you can find on the internet how to use them. The resistors at the input and the output from the 7812 also have a function. They um, um, give the 7812 a certain load. So that there is a stable uh, situation with a definite defined impedance uh, at the output and at the input from the 7812. So the 7812 sees at its output and its input a certain impedance. And that's necessary for stable function, uh, functioning. The small caps from 100 nanofarad uh, act as um, uh, caps that can take away spikes, etc. on the power lead. Also necessary. So here is how that uh, stabilizer unit was made. I always mount it on a piece of aluminum to keep the 7812 cool. It gets a little bit warm and that's good. Well, how super head reception works. Um, in my book here you can find a lot about it. I have already made a video on my channel uh, where you can look inside the a superheterodyne receiver when it is receiving a, a radio signal and um, I've also probed the whole uh, circuit while it was working with the scope. So you can see all the uh, scope views what happens inside this radio. Uh, the two white transformers in the middle are the IF transformers. We go back to the circuit now, the schematic. The radio signal enters the antenna, say on 6 MHz or so. It's amplified somewhat. It's sent to the uh, first transistor, the BC557B, and that's the mixer transistor. We add a frequency from 6455 kHz, so 6.45, uh, sorry, 6.455 MHz to that same transistor and the re result is that the transistor gives at its output here at the collector um, a certain frequency, a fixed fr frequency from 455 uh, kHz. So what the mixer does is frequency transformation. And that uh, is uh, reached uh, by setting that mixer transistor, now in the middle of the screen, to a certain working point, and that's done with P2. So to get the mixer to function properly, you have to align P2. 
And there's also a very important issue. The radio signal that comes in from the antenna and the VFO signal here must be approximately from the same strengths. When that's not the case, the mixing process does not go so well. And that's the reason why the mixer also acts a little bit as um, an amplifier. And that's reached by the 47 nano uh, farad capacitor. Here you also see, now in the middle of the screen, a small decoupling unit. And here the same. It makes that this circuit operates properly and also that it can work as a mixer. When these components are not here, the 1K and the 100 nano farad capacitor, it will not work. They are very important. So we have 455 um, kilohertz now at the output from the mixer and we send that into the second IF stage where it is amplified again and the uh, 455 kilohertz signal is modulated by the antenna by the signal that uh, gets into the antenna. So we have a modulated say a modulated carrier wave at the output from the IF stage. And that's here in the radio. Now in the middle of the screen the second IF filter. You can see here all these potentiometers to align each stage to its specific working point. That's important to tell. Many uh, radios on the internet are published uh, when, they are are, uh, when they are at their successful final state. And in that case the base resistors from the transistors are fixed. Uh, but that does not mean that these circuits always work when you build them. It could be that you have some tolerances in the transistors, etc., etc., and you build such a circuit and it doesn't work. That's the reason why I always use potentiometers P2, P3. Only here at the audio output I don't use a potentiometer because this uh, audio stage always works with these uh, base resistors. In this case 27K and 10K. It always works. No problem. It never failed. Thank you for watching. We're going to the following video.